Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Introduction to Organic Chemical Technology. It is the first class of the course. Since the course is on organic chemical technology, primarily will be associated with the production of different types of organic chemicals, how these are going to be produced in chemical uh, factories, chemical industries that is what we are going to see. Since most of the things are happening in chemical industries, whatever the things that we are going to discuss, it is uh, necessary to have a kind of a brief introduction about the importance of the chemical industries in general. So, let us start with the introduction. Nature of chemical industry is very different from other industries. How it is different? Chemical industries may be considered as creative industries. How it is creative industry? That also we need to understand. Let us say you have a petroleum industry which is also one of the chemical industry actually. So, in the petroleum refinery what you do? You find out the uh, reserves of oil, crude, etc. Then you try to find out the way how to estimate how much it is available and then is it profitable when you do the drilling and excavation to get the all this oil reserve from the underground of the earth. That is what you have to see for that purpose you may be uh, surface geological surveys may be required or geophysical methods also suitable, right. When you find that enough reserves are there, what do you mean by enough reserves? You have certain amount of or uh, some quantum of uh, oil reserves present, but the amount of uh, effort and then money that you are putting into drill it and then get it on the surface and then uh, do the post processing so that you can get different types of uh, chemicals. All that you see the economics of the uh, process, if you find it is uh, sufficiently profitable then only you can say that the enough oil reserves are there that you can do the excavation, right. Then what you do? You, uh, If you find it is uh, profitable for going for this uh, reserves, so then what you can do? You can do the drilling and then yielding kind of uh, technologies are there etc. are available. When you do, uh, do this drilling, not only oil reserves, but also some kind of gases like natural gases, etc., would be available. So, these oil reserves are natural thing, right? Now, these oil reserves are the basic raw material for n number of organic chemicals, those things we are going to see in the petrochemicals uh, chapters when we discuss in the course. So, what happens here? These oil reserves that in general what it is done in the petroleum refineries, they will be taken to a fluid catalytic converter, right. So, when you take it and then you uh, do certain kind of uh, uh, fractionation, then what you do? You get different types of uh, products, lighter ones, heavier ones and then intermediate ones are these kind of different fractions you can get. So, uh, let us say one of the products here you get the benzene. right or ethylene, right. Now, naturally this crude is having certain physical and then uh, chemical properties, right. And then these products like benzene or ethylene whatever you are having, they are having different physical and then chemical properties, right. What does it mean by like you know you take a uh, material raw material which is crude or processed raw material whatever in general in chemical industry and then you do certain kind of reactions either catalytic or non-catalytic with uh, different temperature pressure as per the reaction those conditions changes that is different thing. So, when you take this uh, processed raw material or crude raw material and then do certain kind of reactions you are getting a certain kind of consumer products which are having entirely different properties compared to the you know uh, raw materials. So, that means indirectly you are creating some other uh, product from a altogether different source. So, because of such kind of reasons one can easily say and then convince that the chemical industries are creative industries. Such kind of uh, creation of different product from a kind of a different raw material is possible in only chemical industries, okay. So, that is the reason we can say that chemical industries are creative industries. 
whereas other manufacturing industries are mostly assembly industries. Then how these chemical industries are creative industries? Because basic purpose of chemical industry is to start with a raw material or ore, ore is also possible in general actually. These ores let us say you, you have to make steel or pig iron or stainless steel etc. Right? So, what you do? You take the iron ore. This ore is available in a crude form which is having so many impurities etc. Also uh, when you do the natural mining of this ore, so then you get uh, these things in big lumps kind of sizes. They are not suitable for the uh, reaction to uh, take place. They have to be size reduced and then impurities has to be removed. Right? So, once you do the size reduction and then uh, impurities, let us say you have certain kind of uh, uh, material which, has, which, is, uh, which is also good uh, raw material for some other product, but not for the production of whatever you are intended to, you have to separate them. Then after that what you have to do? You have to wash it so that to mud, dirt, etc. those kind of impurities can be washed out. Then you have to do the uh, you know drying of uh, raw materials, etc. Right? Once it is dried and uh, size reduced, washed, cleaned and then uh, dried it, then it is ready uh, for the proper uh, reaction to undergo in furnaces etc. to produce the uh, iron, this pig iron etc. That is true for most of the things. So then you may have an ore or you may have a processed chemical raw material. Let us say you may be having a benzene C6H6 available some uh, pure uh, available from some sources in pure form and then you have H2SO4. It is also available in pure form from some other sources. So, then you react them and then you try to get C6H5HSO3. Right? So, then what happens? So, now here, so the raw material either it can be processed one, pure one or it can be ore one. So, these raw materials once it is processed they will undergo some kind of reaction to develop you know a consumer product which is economically profitable. So, because of these reasons we can say that you know uh, chemical industries are creative industries. Now, when these uh, reactions take place in industries, so certain things has to be carefully uh, followed. Indeed, strictly they have to be followed, something like safety and then pollution concerns. Let us say you design a plant. Uh, for a production of a chemical which is going to be very profitable, but the plant is not uh, safe enough. Then it is going to be dangerous to the personnel working in the plant as well as the neighboring area people also. Okay? So, that is the reason safety is very much uh, important and then pollution control. Any chemical plant you take there would be some kind of effluents. Right? So, there may be gaseous effluents, there may be uh, liquid effluents and then there may be solid residues or solid wastage. These gases if they are con containing like uh, SOX, NOx, etc. or CO2 uh, in uh, PPM more than the admissible one before uh, uh, releasing uh, into the air that you have to check. If it is more than the admissible uh, range of PPM as per the government laws, so you cannot uh, simply release those gases in the environment. What you have to do? You have to do proper processing and then cleaning and then you make sure that these, the concentration of this uh, dangerous chemical should be less than the prescribed limit of the government. Right? Similarly, liquid also it may be having some kind of uh, contaminants like mercury, chromium etc. If these are present in high concentration and then that liquid effluent if you are uh, releasing in lakes or rivers that is going to be very dangerous to the uh, you know for the water pollution etc. That is going to be very dangerous and may lead to water pollution. Okay? So, likewise solids also if you do not do proper processing and then simply dump it uh, here and there then that may lead to land pollution and then simultaneously it may you know by because of the leaching it may cause the water pollution as well and then because of uh, you know living openly it may lead to gases pollution also, air pollution also it may take place because of uh, gases being uh, released into the atmosphere. So, these kind of things are very important to be considered. right? So, not only the profit that one has to see, but also most importantly the safety and then 
pollution concerns. Each chemical engineering working in any of the chemical plant must be aware of uh, this kind of uh, minimum uh, safety and pollution uh, concerns of the government. Right? In the uh, chemical industries, usually physical, mechanical and chemical changes occur in general. Right? So, let us say uh, whatever the iron ore example I uh, mentioned. So, uh, crushing and grinding, size reduction of them and then you know washing them and then drying them etc. All that, all those things are a kind of a physical uh, operations, there are no chemical changes are occurring. Such kind of uh, physical operations are known as uh, uh, unit operations, whereas uh, there are some uh, chemical reactions may also take place, those chemical changes are known as unit processes. Okay? So, now we can see how creative is a chemical industry that is what we have seen. Right? What if it is creative? Right? It is good that it is creative, but what is the uh, advantage that uh, you know a society or nation is having? So, from that point of view, if you see for the growth of uh, any nation, GDP is uh, a very important factor and then many factors uh, influence this GDP. Right? So, uh, one of the factor is chemical industries also. Let us say for India, Indian chemical industries contribute 7 percent to its GDP, that is a huge number. Right? Now, there is something like industrial output. gross industrial output that is like every industry like not only chemical industry different types of metallurgical industries also software industries also hardware industries also every industry having some gross output annual right so in this gross industrial output if you see the share of chemical plants or chemical industries then it was approximately uh, 13% uh, in 1970s and then it is approximately 45 percent or more in 1995 by which India has already become uh, self-sustained from chemical industry point of view. Right? Further Indian chemical industry you know sixth largest across the globe and then third in Asia. So, now, what if is, uh, uh, this is sixth largest or third largest, what if it's sixth largest company in the globe and then what if it is third uh, largest in Asia? So, that, that actually depends from the market as well as the production as well as the market. So, the Indian chemical industries whatever the products whether they are uh, inorganic or organic, right? these chemicals are having huge market in India, not only for the household purpose, societal purpose, industrial purpose, defense purpose, like this different purposes uh, you know you have market. The market for the inorganic and organic chemicals in India is huge, that is the reason they are able to contribute large to the GDP of the nation. That is the reason its share in the uh, overall gross industrial output of uh, India is very high compared to the other ones. Okay? So, now, we understand from this point how much essential is chemical industry from the GDP as well as the growth of uh, any nation point of view, especially for India statistics also we have seen. Right? So, now it is essential to understand more about a chemical plant because we established that chemical industries are or the growth of chemical industry is very important from the point of the uh, nation's growth. Right? So, we need to understand as a chemical engineering graduates, we need to understand many more factors, you know, aspects related to the chemical plant. Okay? Any chemical plant is a combination of various unit operations and unit processes as I mentioned. Just now unit operations are nothing but physical or mechanical changes whereas the unit processes are nothing but the chemical changes that are occurring in the plant. Okay? So, these chemical plants may be grouped as follows, actually grouping is done by uh, taking the reaction. For any chemical plant, reaction is very much essential, very important. It may be regarded as the heart of the plant. Right? So, just now we have seen uh, you know as, a, as an example of uh, crude oil, 
as well as the iron ore. Whatever the naturally available uh, resources are there, they are not suitable for the processing directly in the chemical uh, reactors. So, what we do? We do some kind of uh, processing of the reactants. Since they are occurring before the reaction, those things are known as the upstream processes or raw materials pre-processing steps where you know like you know you may be doing something like you know crushing of the ore, grinding of the ore, uh, washing of impurities from the ore, filtration, separation if some kind of separation etc. required. So, then filtration may be required, then drying is required, sometimes raw materials may be needed with mixed with some other things, mixing etc. are required. So, you, what you can see all this crushing, grinding, washing, filtration, drying, mixing etc. all of them are you know physical or mechanical changes only. So, all the steps of upstream processes are almost like unit operations. Okay. There may be sequence of reactions uh, occurring or sequence of reactors may be there. So, you cannot say that uh, you know before the third reactor in the second and first reactor some reactions are occurring. So, why cannot we say you know them as a unit operations? It is not about the first or second reaction, anything other than the reaction or chemical changes are there. So, all those things are regarded as unit operations or the whatever the physical mechanical changes occurring in the plant all of them are unit operations. So, once you do these steps what you can see the raw material is processed and then suitable for the reaction to occur. What do you mean by processed raw material? Let us say you have the lumps of ore you know few uh, meters or uh, 50 centimeters or 80 centimeters uh, average diameter something like that. So, if you put it in the reactor first of all you cannot put it in the reactor especially when the reactors are continuous reactor. Right? So, then even let us say you assume you put it and then there is a liquid reaction taking place, solid liquid reaction is taking place. So, you interact the, this ore with the liquid, that liquid would be uh, you know you know interacting with the uh, outer surface only or maybe it may be going into some uh, interior depth of the uh, raw material or ore, bigger ore whatever is there. But the core of the raw material which is uh, in bit, in, at the center of uh, these rocks may not be in fact, it will not be reacting because of a low surface to volume ratio for this uh, bigger size of uh, rocks. That is the reason we do crushing, grinding, washing, filtration, drying, mixing etc. So, after these steps especially after crushing and grinding the size of the ore uh, decreases such a way that you know SP by VP surface area per volume whatever is there that increases and then because of that one interaction with the react, you know liquid or gas stream with which it is going to interact react is going to increase. So, that is the point. Okay? So, once you have this processed raw material then you can do the reaction. Right? So, converting processed raw materials to products is the second step in the plant in which chemical reactions like oxygenation, hydrogenation, polymerization, sulfonation, uh, oligomerization, polymerization, uh, hydro processing, hydro treatment etc. So, many different uh, reactions may be undergoing. So, all these reactions chemical changes are there. So, then these are known as the unit processes. Right? Now, whatever the purity of the raw material you have, whatever the uh, temperature pressure and then uh, catalyst selection, selective catalyst uh, you take. Um, it is not possible to have 100 percent conversion in general. So, then there would be some kind of a unreacted reactants or byproducts impurities may also be there with the along with the desired product. So, then those impurities uh, are you know undesired products, unreacted reactants etc. has to be separated out from the product because consumers requirement is a specific product only not byproducts or unreacted reactants etc. Right? So, for that you need to do some post processing of the products. Since these are occurring after the reaction level, so these steps are known as the downstream processes. Now, what are these processes? They are something like distillation, evaporation, extraction, settling, granulation, centrifugation, all of them also here again they are physical or mechanical changes depicting. Only physical or chemical changes occur in these processes also. So, these processes are also known as the unit operations. So, you can see in a plant majority of the capital cost is occupied by the unit operations and then connections. Almost two third of the 
capital cost of any plant is devoted to unit operations and connecting pipes etc. in general. Okay? So, this is about the chemical plant, fine. So, what are the roles of chemical engineering graduates in the chemical plants that is what we need to understand. Let us say a UG chemical engineering graduate has been hired by a chemical industry. So, they will be giving training to those graduates to work in chemical plants and they will be uh, working in different aspects of the plants. They may include research, design, development, production, technical sales. Technical sales is different from the marketing sales. So, this also be trained services or management etc. those kind of aspects would be you know, uh, you know trained in those kind of aspects uh, so that uh, graduate engineer would be comfortable enough to work in any of the associated segments of the chemical plant. Okay? So, let us say if you are hired and then given tasks to look in the chemical plant part only. So, what are the basic you know things that would be expected from you as a undergraduate chemical engineering student? You are expected to develop, design and then engineer not only the complete process but also individual equipment used in the plant. Okay? That means, you should have a complete knowledge about the design, operating uh, process and then limitations, merits, demerits of each and every equipment and then design and then installation and then commissioning of a complete process you are expected to do. Okay? Further, selection of uh, raw materials is also very much essential. Okay? Let us say uh, raw material when you select what, what are the things that you may consider? There may be many things that, that you need to consider. Let us say uh, location from uh, where are you getting this raw material and then purity. Purity is uh, very much important. Let us say coal example if you take, the coal that you get in Assam, the coal you, that you get in Chhattisgarh that, and the coal that you get in Telangana, its composition is going to be different, especially in person, in terms of the ash percentage, etc. So, and then in which location your plant is there, how far it is from your plant, the source of raw material, how pure it is, those things you have to consider. And then also mode of transport. What are the possible modes of transport that are available for you to get those raw materials? And then most importantly, financial load, how much money are you going to spend in this one? Let us say sometimes what happen, even if you have a slightly less grade or less pure uh, raw material, but if it is nearby your location and then it is going to be profitable or does not make much difference in the final yield and purity of the product that you are going to get from that raw material. So, it is better to get it from the closer location. Considering all these factors, you should able to select the uh, raw materials appropriately, not only raw material from the source of raw material. Sometimes what happens, the raw material is directly available. Let us say benzene reacting with the sulfuric acid. Benzene and sulfuric acid individually you may be getting from different plants pure in pure conditions. So, you do not need to worry too much about all these kind of things because across the country the prices of uh, given a chemical may be remaining almost same, not there may not be much difference. If at all there is a difference that is maybe coming because of the transportation costs as well as the tax variation from state to the state. Let us say petrol and diesel their prices are slightly different from one state to the other, other state because of the differences in the taxes. So, these factors one should consider and then select the raw materials appropriately. Then operate plants with safety, it is very much essential and then efficiency and economically as I already mentioned. Safety is very much es essential. Most important factor in chemical plant is the safety. Because anything happens, it is not only going to be harmful to the uh, personal working in the plant, but also to the neighboring uh, people also, it may be affecting. So, safety is very much essential. Then check whether product meets the requirements, it is very much essential. Sometimes in the market, uh, you see, uh, you know, uh, buy one get one free kind of options would be there, Let's, let us say hand wash. Right? So, why because these hand wash etc. you know they are a kind of colloidal suspensions. If there is a some kind of mistakes or you know some kind of uh, 
uh, low grade product is there so then those suspensions may be settling quickly within 6 months or within 1 month rather staying for 2 years or something like that. Settling of a suspension that means what? Actually this hand wash etc so many ingredients would be there if they are separating so liquid phase may be at the top and then whatever the suspend particles etc are there they may be at the bottom after 6 months or so. So then they have those such kind of material has to be utilized before that period. So in order to sell out such kind of products the uh, marketing strategy is that you know you give such kind of offers right. So you have to be very careful to see the requirements, product uh, requirements. If any mistakes if you do then the product quality is uh, going to be uh, decreased and then you know you have to compromise on the marketing, final market value of the product, okay. Thus it is essential for chemical engineering graduates to have comprehensive picture of uh, chemical plants, okay. So are these the only thing? Unlike the other industries, chemical industries is the one where the knowledge of so many variety of different subjects expected to be uh, you know gained by the uh, trainee engineers or the engineer working in the plant. Something like you know basic chemistry, you are expected to have some knowledge of analytical, physical, inorganic and organic chemistry also. Not only that one, concepts of unit operations and unit processes also required, thermodynamics also required, kinetics, then chemical engineering process design and mechanical design. Chemical process design is different from the mechanical process design. Chemical process design let us say distillation column is there, how many uh, columns should be there, what should be the height of the column and then to which stage the feed has to enter and all those things are you know chemical engineering process design calculations. Whereas the mechanical design, the uh, construction of the material, which material should be used for constructing that uh, distillation column, right? What should be the thickness of the column? How, by which material trays should be prepared? All those things are, you know, mechanical design aspects. Okay, but still you are expected to have such knowledge also. If not completely, minimum knowledge you are expected to have. Then most importantly, economics. Okay. So next is. Uh, to understand what is chemical technology. Since we are talking about the organic chemical technology, first of all whether it is organic technology or inorganic chemical technology, you should understand what is chemical technology. Chemical technology in the sense you are using chemical engineering principles to produce certain kind of chemicals under profitable manner, right. So chemical technology takes into account principles of chemical engineering and applies at industrial scale to produce chemicals. Right? And then by the nature of the chemicals, whether the produced chemical is inorganic or organic, the chemical technology may be grouped as organic chemical technology and inorganic chemical technology. Right? So common industries which fall under inorganic chemical industries categories if you see, let us say uh, fuel gases you have like H2, H2 plus CO synthesis gas and then ammonia synthesis gas and then uh, industrial gas like O2, N2, uh, CO2 etc. all of them are you know inorganic in nature. So most of the fuel and industrial gases industries are uh, inorganic chemical industries. Likewise individual fertilizers as well as the mixed chemical fertilizers. What we can understand from here agricultural industry for which fertilizers are very essential cannot uh, sustain without the role of chemical engineers that you can understand. Some other inorganic chemical industries are like chloroalkali industry, cement and lime industry, glass industry like that and number of inorganic chemical industries are also existing. Now based on the source as well as the method of production, organic chemical industry can be natural or synthetic chemical industry. What do you mean by natural product industries? That means the product that whatever you are getting, the source is very natural source. Let us say oils, vegetable oils are there. Uh, how are you getting vegetable oils? You get from the uh, seeds, different types of vegetable seeds you use and then you try to get the oil where you do some kind of uh, extraction followed by hydrogenation. So since they are naturally available, so that is the reason such products are natural products and then corresponding industries are natural product industries. So some of the natural product industries are edible and essential oils industries, soaps industries, carbohydrate industries where sugars, starch, cellulose etc. comes into the picture. 
then fermentation industries where you can produce ethanol, butanol, etc. Then pulp and paper industry, etc. Right? So, if you list out a few synthetic organic chemical industries, then you can have organics, different types of organics, pesticides, petrochemicals, detergents, polymer industries, etc. All of them comes under synthetic organic chemical industries. Okay? Now, what we do? We see a few details of these industries. Actually, these two industries, you know, natural product industries and synthetic organic chemical industries, whatever their products are there, how are they being produced at the plant level? Production, production of these uh, natural as well as synthetic organic chemicals in the chemical plants, how it is being done? Before that raw materials, their quantitative requirements. What are the reactions? What are the methods of productions? Right? What are the merits, demerits of uh, each method that is available for the production of a given chemical? Sometimes to obtain one particular chemical, you may be having more than one process. Then selection of process is also very important. Okay? So those things then. What are the engineering problems, major engineering problems of the plant, etc., that you can look upon and then try to improve? And then, what are the economics, applications, etc.? All these things we are going to see for each of these industries and then their major projects also. So, for the major products of all these industries, we are going to see all these steps in detail in the uh, due course of the, you know. Uh, uh, this particular organic chemical technology course. Right? But however, in this uh, lecture, we are going to see a few uh, minimum basic details so that it will be giving a picture what are we going to study in the remaining of the weeks of the course that we can understand. Those things we are going to see now. Okay? So, let us start with natural chemical industries. First one is oils and fats industry that is what we are going to discuss in which edible and then essential oils we are going to discuss. Edible oils are naturally occurring compounds and then derivatives. What are these naturally occurring components or what is the chemical nature of uh, these natural, naturally occurring compounds? If you see, mostly they are long chain fatty acids and then esters such, are the, such as the glycerides. And then what are the derivatives of uh, these long chain fatty acids and then uh, glycerides, etc. If you see, they are nothing but glycerin, long chain fatty alcohols, some sulfates and sulfonates. Right? Then, where are they used? These uh, edible oils, where are they used in general for the food that we clearly understand by the name of, uh, by the name that is edible oils. Then it, they are also used for the sanitation, polymers and then paint industries as well. Then coming to the essential oils, these are group of organic components which are pleasantly odoriferous and used in cosmetics, perfumes, soaps, medicines, etc. Now most of the oils in general, they are obtained by the extraction followed by the hydrogenation we see the details of those processes anyway. Next is soaps and detergents industry. Actually detergents is not a natural product actually, it does not come under natural product industry. However, it is having competitive role compared to the soaps, that is the reason detergents are also discussed along with the soaps industries. Okay? So, compounds of these industries are used in general for uh, cleanliness and for industrial surface active applications. The basic chemistry involved in such kind of uh, industries is nothing but the colloidal chemistry. Soaps, they contain compounds of type RCOOM, where RCOO is fatty acid radical representing oleic, stearic, palmitic, lauric, myristic, etc. Their chemical structure, properties, etc., all those things we are going to see when. Uh, we discuss in detail in detail about the uh, soap industries. Then detergents, they have a lower surface tension compared to the soaps in general. So, 
they promote or they have the better uh, performance compared to the soaps. Though they are uh, uh, synthetic organic chemicals, they are discussed under the natural product industries because of their competitive position with the soaps. There are four different types of detergents in general existing, anionic, cationic, non-ionic and then detergent builders. Under each category what are the anionic uh, detergents, what are the cationic det detergents, what are the non-ionic detergents, what are the builders, etc. All those things we are going to discuss when we discuss individually on these industries. Hydrolysis and saponification processes are commonly used for the production of soaps. Common detergents are sulfated fatty alcohols and alkyl aryl sulfonates. Next is sugar and starch industry which come under carbohydrates industry. So, products of these industries are carbohydrates which are having naturally occurring organics having combinations of C, H, O such a way that H and O are having the ratio same as H2O. Let us say O6 is there, H12 would be there and then C may be some other different number, right. If O is 11, H is going to be 22, C may be some other number. These kind of, you know, chemical structure they will be having these carbohydrates. Some common products of uh, uh, these industries are sucrose, dextrose, starch, cellulose. Common methods of production actually extraction from the sugarcane is the common method. However, it is extracted and post processed in the form of sugars. Then extraction of sugarcane to produce crystalline white sugar is one category. If the extraction is done and then to produce jaggery, then extraction of sugarcane to produce jaggery is the other method. Okay? Starch is commonly produced from maize kernels. It is used to produce its derivatives such as dextrin, dihaldehyde, starch, starch phosphates, etc. Fermentation industries. In fermentation industry what happens? Specific microorganisms acts on a substrate such a way that desired product is obtained. Okay? That is what happens. But uh, given a microorganism may be good for producing one kind of uh, a product may not be good enough for the other kind of product. So, including the selection of microorganism is also variational in fermentation industry. So, in this industry specific microorganism acts on substrate to produce desired chemical compound. Two types are there uh, in the fermentation industry in the presence of air and in the absence of air. So, if it is in the presence of air or oxygen these fermentation processes are known as aerobic. If it is occurring in the absence of air or oxygen then we call it anaerobic fermentation process. Some products are ethanol, butanol, acetone, but however nowadays these products are also produced by the uh, synthetic methods because of the uh, cheap and abundant raw materials available to produce this ethanol, butanol, etc. Production methods, it can be batch or continuous. Next is pulp and paper industry. Indian paper industry is more than 100 years old and Indian paper industry is the first one which has used bamboo as basic raw material for making paper in the world. Indian paper industry depending on the size of units and then sources or raw materials, uh, Indian paper industry may be grouped into six different types. Those things we discuss when we talk about uh, pulp and paper industries in detail. Pulp is commercial cellulose derived from bamboo, bagasse, wood, etc. by mechanical or chemical methods. So, methods of production, if it is mechanical, ground wood, if it is chemical, then sulphate and sulphide processes and then some semi-chemical processes are also available. Now, synthetic chemical industries, let us start with the rubber industry. So, this rubber is not only synthetic but also natural product industry. It is naturally also produced, but you know synthetic rubber is having so many different types of varieties that synthetic uh, rubber industry has uh, dominating over natural uh, rubber industry. So, that is the reason rubber industry is discussed under synthetic chemical industry section. Rubber can be natural or synthetic rubber. Definition of a true rubber if you see it must elongate at least to 200 percent and return to its original dimensions rapidly and forcibly. If you see common products of uh, rubber industry, styrene, butadiene, copolymer, SBR, synthetic fibers, nylons, 
polyester fibers, viscous rayon fibers, etc. So many are there. These are also used for uh, uh, you know different types of uh, textile uh, manufacturing also. Next is the petroleum processing industry. Actually petroleum refinery and petrochemicals nowadays there is a uh, separate uh, discipline in, in some of the university but you know these uh, petroleum refinery and petrochemical industries are completely based on the chemical engineering principles. That is the reason they should be considered as subset of chemical industries only and then chemical engineers are the base for the uh, petroleum refinery and petrochemicals industry as well. So that is the reason for chemical engineering students also it is essential to have a basic knowledge about petroleum processing and then petrochemicals industries as well. So we need to define petroleum. It is found millions of years ago from organic matter of uh, marine deposits in anaerobic condition that is in the absence of oxygen and these organic matters are allowed to uh, attack by selective bacteria so that destruction of carbohydrates and proteins may take place and leaving only fatty components, right. So those fats accumulate as oil reserves that is the reason these are also known as the fossil fuels, right. It is major source of energy and also basic raw material for production of large numbers of uh, synthetic organic chemicals. Actually four weeks of the course is uh, dedicated to the uh, petroleum related uh, subject in this course because the crude that whatever crude oil that you get from the petroleum refining you know that is source for huge number of chemicals, hundreds of chemicals, organic chemicals are being produced from them. Right? So, it is very much essential to understand a few basics about these industries. Thus, petroleum industry ranks highest of all chemical industries. Chemical composition of uh, uh, petroleum crude if you see, mostly they contain open chain or aliphatic compounds, ring or cyclic compounds and asphalts. Then refinery crude petroleum classification if you see, there are three categories, paraffin base, naphthalene base and intermediate base, right. Steps in production of uh, crude petroleum, there are several steps are there. First you have to find out the reserves, then exploration methods you have to see whether surface geological methods are sufficient or should you also go to the geophysical methods you have to check and then methods of production, drilling and then yields are two methods. Petroleum refinery products if you see as I already mentioned n number of products are there. But you know depending on their volatility and nature they can be classified as follows. When you do the drilling of these oil reserves there would be several gases products would also be there such as uh, natural gas etc. So gas fraction is also taken as one of the petroleum refinery product, right. So and this gas fraction include natural gas, light gas, off gas, LPG. Then light ends like petrol solvent naphtha and then kerosene, light heating oils, intermediates like heavy fuels, diesel oils, gas oils. We mostly come across in general in uh, regular life this petrol, kerosene and then diesel, right. Diesel is intermediate whereas the petrol and kerosene are light ends. Heavy distillates like mineral oil, flotation or frothing oil, waxes, lubricating oils, etc. Residues like lubricants, fuel oil, greases, petrol actum, asphalts, road oils, petroleum coke, etc. Some byproducts like ammonia, detergents, sulfur, and their derivatives would also be there. Okay. Next one is the petrochemicals industry. Petrochemical, by definition, if you see these are chemical compounds or elements recovered or derived either partially or entirely from petroleum or natural gas hydrocarbons, okay. Principal uh, raw materials if you see obviously natural gas, liquefied petroleum gas, refinery of gases, hydroforming of petrochemical stocks, naphtha and fuel oil, petroleum coke whatever we get in the petroleum refinery all of them may be used as a uh, raw material, um, all of them may be used as raw materials to get different types of petrochemicals. Right. Petrochemicals, raw materials contain one or more predominant hydrocarbons which can be separated so that compounds are synthesized as below based on the carbon number. Let us say chemicals from C1 compounds, 
chemicals from C2 compounds, chemicals from C3 compounds, chemicals from C4 compounds, like from C1 compounds like maybe methane and synthesis gas, from C2 compounds that means ethylene and acetylene, C3 components that mean propylene and then C4 components are nothing but butanes and butanes. We are going to discuss all of them in detail when we discuss about petrochemical industries anyway. Then chemicals from aromatic something like benzene, toluene, xylene, etc. also some pesticides. In the last chapter of the course, we will be discussing about the polymer industry. So, polymers are in general composed of molecules of uh, molecular weight in the order of 10 power 3 to 10 power 7. These are made up of repeated basic units produced from monomers. And then synthesis of polymers, they can be synthesized from various types and combinations of monomers to yield unusual properties, both physical and chemical properties. Classification of polymers is very difficult because of the interacting relationships among large number of polymeric materials. But however, four uh, classification or four different types are considered as uh, common ones. They are nothing but based on the physical chemical structure one classification, based on the mode of preparation another classification and then based on the physical properties is another classification and fourth one is based on the technical applications is one another uh, classification. So, polymer technology. Polymeric materials are manufactured by standard chemical engineering methods. So, uh, need not to say that polymer industry is also subset of chemical industry are also one of the important uh, component of chemical industry. Classification of polymer uh, applications if you see, they may be used as adhesives, coatings and films, fibers, solid shapes, etc. Many more uh, applications are possible, right. Now, the references for today's lecture are provided here. Outlines of Chemical Technology by Dryden, edited and revised by Gopal Rao and Marshall, third edition. Chemical Process Industries by Austin and Shreve, fifth edition. And then Encyclopedia of Chemical Technology, Kirk and Atmar, fourth edition. Unit Processes in Organic Synthesis by Groggins, fifth edition. Thank you. Thank you.